Hello everyone and welcome back. A little bit of a different one today here for you. Root Canal is pretty straightforward, kind of a cool uh, almost C-shaped thing at the end here, but as you can see deep carries on this number 18, uh, approximating the pulp, getting pretty deep down inside there. Uh, what's interesting about this is the crown length thing that I ended up doing, the fact that I wasn't able to get it dry initially, and that it only has two canals. You saw the warning at the beginning, so you know keep that in mind. <laughs> as you can see, we got a leaky uh, electric handpiece here. I'll show you how to fix that in just a minute, or in, uh, in by just a minute, I mean in a future video. And what we're going to start off here by doing is removing both the carries and the composite inside there using that big surgical length 8 round burr. Cleaning everything out here. Carries was actually pretty large on this case, all things considered. Patient was in a fair amount of pain. Uh, it was just cold sensitive though, so I was hoping I could one-step this. You'll see in a moment that that unfortunately was not the case. Uh, lots of work here with that 8 round burr because, like I said, the decay was really leathery. I find that it almost clogs up the burr more than I'd like when it's this soft of decay and requires a little bit more cleaning and kind of rinsing. I think my water shut off halfway through this case as well. <laughs> as you can see, the assistant tried to help cl clean off the mirror there a little bit, um, but really deep decay on this tooth just to start us off. And you can notice there's some bleeding coming from the gingiva. That's to be expected. There's a little bit of overgrowth there. Um, but at this point, we've done most of the access. I don't really need to use the workhorse here so you don't get to see any horses as far as my... Actually, you know what I do at the end? I'll put a workhorse in there for you. Um, it's the big boy, so that's the that's the big dancing one. Actually, I don't have an AI for that. Oh boy, this is going to be exciting. I, uh, I, I try to... In case you're in behind the scenes, I do, I do most of the editing beforehand or record and then go back through and make final touches with all the silly jokes and things like that. So there will get to be a fun little uh, Easter egg at the end if you stick around. Anyway, <laughs> at this I'm, I, this is like the third video I've done today because I'm trying to catch back up. So this is, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, cleaning everything out here with the uh, Triton, as you can see. Lots of bleeding already coming from this tooth. The patient was in a lot of pain. Thankfully, we didn't have to do any supplemental anesthesia or anything like that. Uh, but only two canals on this tooth. I didn't show the comb beam slice, but it was very clear that there's only two. As you saw, dental students watching, this is a really rare configuration. Most of the time, you just haven't opened your access up, and you're only getting two of the canals. And there's usually three or even four. So... This case was pretty wide open, not too much as far as the cleaning and shaping, and I'm going through a lot of irrigation at this point, so already used a full thing of Triton, I think two full things of bleach as well, trying to get this tooth to stop bleeding. So what I'm going to show here is one approach that I have to see if I'm going to be able to operate and finish a case in when you have a lot of bleeding. So as you can see, lots and lots of rinsing here. As a reminder, bleach is really, really good at removing organic tissue, and that includes the blood vessels that are causing a lot of this hyperemia. And you want to pretty much rinse with bleach primarily. A lot of drying here as well with the micro suction, uh, the ASI card, and you'll notice that I keep going and adjusting it. What's, what's happening is there's so much bleeding coming from the canals. I know it doesn't look like much here, but there's so much I have to have to keep cleaning off the tip of it. So what I like to do in these cases, this is a trick to see if you're able to finish. I'll actually put some calcium hydroxide inside the canals, rinse out the coronal portion, and then use paper points and kind of just recapitulate up and down inside there. That helps hopefully coagulate any blood inside there and see if you can get it dry. What you're going to notice here though is we are still getting bleeding on the end of these points. I know I'm pulling it out quickly, but there is still bleeding there. I'm still getting drainage. Um, that's me cleaning off the tip of the microsuction like you saw. And unfortunately at this point, I'm just trying to get this patient, you know, he really wanted it to be done in a single visit, but sometimes if you cannot get everything dry, I do not recommend obturating the case as that kind of leads to failures and a lot more pain and issues like that. So my rule has always been if I cannot get the canals dry, I'm not going to finish the case. So here we are at this point, still having drainage even after doing all this work, and you can see the, there is still a little bit of blood right on the tip of those paper points, and to me, that's a sign that this case is going to need to have some calcium hydroxide. So go back in, replace it with the calcium hydroxide inside there. You can see these actually all congealed together. The two canals kind of joined into one. Uh, they also had some intricacies, almost like a C-shape. You'll see that in the final x-ray there. So most C-shapes I like to two-step anyway, just to help get any of those little, you know, there's deltas, there's isthmuses, is, is my, is, is, is miss, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that's, how to spell that one, but um, <laughs> the, the me editing here in 20 minutes, will probably get that one done. Anyway, 
clean everything out. And one other thing I'm doing here is deliberately leaving a little bit of a space between the cavet and the tooth. That way the patient can clean this area out. So when he came back, he had actually cleaned it out so well, he broke off the filling on 19 as well. <laughs> so as you, you can see from the pre-op image, there's a bunch of caries underneath there. No surprise there. And what I'm doing now is reaccessing. So he's been asymptomatic, feeling great. One thing I like to do when I reaccess a case like this where there's you know, a large amount of decay is to almost do a more normalized access. That way you can see I have a mesial wall now. So when I do my final rinse, I don't have to worry as much about bleach or EDTA leaking into the patient's mouth. I'll clean it out at the end, of course, because I'm going to be doing the buildup on this one. But what you'll see here is just the traditional, you know, bleach, endoactivator, EDTA, endoactivator. You kind of get the idea. We've done this a hundred times. But at this point, all I'm really trying to do is get the calcium hydroxide out of there. The calcium hydroxide does far more work than the bleach or the EDTA does in terms of removing bacteria and other components inside there. So I just want to get it out of there so I can fill it up with gutta percha instead. As you can see, nice and dry, those two canals looking right out of us and really, really you know, it, it looks good. I'm, I'm pleased with how dry this canal is. You can also see how that mesial canal, when I put the paper point in there, it actually drops into the distal canal. And what you want to do is fill, when you're doing the score technique, you want to fill, if a type 2 canal like this, fill the straightest canal first, because usually when you're back filling, it will fill back into the curve as well. And so that would be the distal canal. And you can see it actually filled up the mesial canal really nicely. What I then do is go back in, and because now both canals are filled with gutta percha, I'm gonna be taking that condenser and pushing both of these right now. So you, you want to kind of go back and forth. And I often will switch, and I, this is a larger shaped case just kind of naturally. And so I'll also flip around and use the larger end of that condenser and then just backfill just a tiny amount there. Not too, too much as far as what we had to do here because when I did that initial fill, the gutta percha flew, float, float, float. Smooth, very, very smooth. Float. This is, this is going to be a fun day. Like I said, I've talked way too much today, so it always, it, I always get a little punchy <laughs> when we get into this case, but going to use the PacMac here as well, just because I knew there could be some intricacies between the two canals, as well as type two canals. You usually want to go back down with the PacMac because there's a higher chance of having a void right with those two joints. So everything looks good as far as the check film. So at this point, we're going to be removing the rest of the cabinet and getting everything cleaned up and ready. Uh, you're any periodontist watching a why the hell are you watching a YouTube video about a root canal? <laughs> Maybe because of the thumbnail. I haven't created that one yet, but I'll probably put something in there about crown lengthening. But any periodontist watching, you may want to look away here because I'm going to do some nasty things to this poor gingival tissue. As you can see, it's already pretty nasty to begin with. This is not healthy gum tissue. So this is a technique that I've kind of modified from Mike Trudeau, awesome dentist out of Virginia, definitely a friend. And he is amazing at this sort of thing. And so he kind of does, he calls them burrectomies um, for crown lengthening. And the idea is you just use a burr and remove the gingiva and then a little bit of the bone as well, just to create some more restorative space for the general dentist here. And that's what we're doing. So I use the big round burr to remove the bulk of the gingival tissue. And I'm using the flat end of the prep burr now to create a nice flat, smooth surface of the bone so that when it heals, the gingiva will heal in there nicely. Now that we got everything nice and dry, you can actually see it's not bleeding too, too badly. Once you remove that inflamed gingiva, it doesn't take too much. And all I'm doing here is just hitting the bleeding spots with the alpha tip and then going in with the ferric sulfate just to scrub that area, make sure we don't have any leakage while we're restoring the case. And you'll be surprised. It looks for as much stuff as I had to remove inside there. You'll be surprised by how dry this remains the entire time. So going to do the restorative process now, like you've seen before, start off with the disclosing solution just to make sure there's, you know, we remove everything. And this will show you really quickly why we use that disclosing solution. Look at how dark it is in that distal area. So I need to focus a little bit more um, when I'm doing the air abrasion. And in this case, it was really awkward to get underneath this. You'll, you'll see me try to flip around and get different angles here. My poor assistants already hate this thing because of how much dust it makes you can see on the rubber dam. And this is me trying to figure out how to get in there. The, the mesial wasn't too bad, but that distal, it was just awkward. You can see that missing filling on 19 as well. Um, I kind of flip back and forth, try to just get up into that little overhang there just to make sure we get that nice and clean and remove any biofilm that's still present there. So if you haven't used this before, it is pretty cool because that top part freely swivels. 
So it, it is kind of bulky. So if you have smaller hands, it might be a little bit awkward. I have stupidly large hands for an Adonis, which is real fun. I went 13, know what I mean. And the point here is you want to try to find tools that will be freely movable and swivel. That's much better to get into weird angles. So that's what it looks like. All nice and clean. Really pleased with that. Just two canals as we've gone over in here and going to be do, doing the build up here. So clear field. This is a, is this a single bottle or two bottle? Um, I don't know. If we do go back again, it'll be to the two bottle. So I'll let you know in just a second here. But I have been trying both uh, the single and the two bottle systems out. And I think I like the single a little bit more. The two bottle is very thick and seems to not flow quite as well. Uh, the single bottle though, I really enjoyed it as long as I don't see any D-bonds. Having talked with our, our local prosthodontist, he uses a single bottle as well. So that was a single bottle there. There we go. Um, you, you will all know this because I will put the title in saying it was the single bottle. <laughs> uh, but I will just look like an idiot as I'm babbling along on top of you. So as long as we don't have any D-bonds and it looks like it's working, I think I'm going to be switching to the single bottle. It, it's, it saves, you know, a very minute amount of time. But more importantly, it seems to handle more like the old school Photobond three bottle system that I've been used to using for the last like eight years. Anyway, build it as the restored material like normal. This patient was very funny. He is from another country and was a little upset with me that I use such a white colored material because he says he's not going to go get the crown until he goes back to his country, which could be a year from now. <laughs> I uh, told him that he, he can't wait a year on this one because uh, you need a crown on this too. There is no way, even with the, I, I'm sure David Clark could close this gap with composite, but that's just, that's too much for me to be able to do. So what we're doing here, polishing everything off, and you'll see in the final picture here, the mesial aspect looks really nice and clean. I gave the general dentist, whoever's going to eventually do this, I'm not sure if it's going to be in Reno, if it'll be back in his home country, but the general dentist should have more than enough space and biologic width, which if there are periodontists watching, I'd love to have a conversation with you about does that actually matter and make it so that it's a predictable restorative option. I also let the patient know he needs to get a filling done on 19. Uh, we'll see if he does any of this. I'm not sure if I'll ever see him again, unfortunately. So um, try, I, I would try to get recalls on these patients, but we all know how that goes. Anyway, the one other trick you can do here is if you suspect that a patient may not go and get their you know, crown done for a long time, you can actually take it a little bit more out of the bite and hope that there's some eruption. But that's what the photo looks like. Um, really pleased with that. You can see there's some nice healthy root structure. That's what it looks like on the x-ray. The little web in between the teeth is very pretty. Anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching. I thought this would be a fun one to show everybody. Um, I, I love the periodontists out there, so <laughs> sorry for sorry for the jokes. But you, you come on, ended on us are just we're all losers, so you can make fun of us as much as you want. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, drop a comment if you have any questions, uh, comments. I, I read and respond to all of them, and I appreciate all of you so much. Um, like and subscribe because it tells me what you guys want to see more of, and I will talk to you next time.